I'm looking at the home screen of TestLink. Um, I've logged in as a, a project leader, so I can see a project here that I'm assigned to, and I've I've got access to anything to do with this this particular project. I can add um, platforms like different uh, devices to it. I can add keywords. I can define the specification of the, all the tests, and I can build the different tests, um, the, the different test plans. So what I'm going to show you here is just two elements of the, of the system. I'm uh, keeping it nice and simple for the moment. Uh, test specification and then we'll look at how we execute those tests. So at the moment I've just got um, two tests, test cases within here. Uh, within a test suite called permissions and I've got a test case about a support user so this is a, a, a set of tests about how we are setting up the different permissions uh, within a particular application it could be Moodle, Refront, whatever um, and I'm going to add a, another step to this list of, of steps that the test would work through so at the moment I can see the summary of which I've written about this, this particular test. I've written some preconditions. I've got a couple of steps. I'm just going to add another step. And so they log into the site, they go to the user list and view a particular user. Uh, user profile should appear. And I'm just going to add one more. Uh, attempt to log in as that user, which is what you'd expect a support person to be able to do so they can see how uh, that user is inter interacting with the system. And uh, attempt is successful, is the expected behavior. So I'm going to save and exit that. We've got a similar test for tutor permissions. Um, just a, a very simple one, log in as a tutor, go to a course of tutoring and we'll just add another step uh, where we start a discussion thread. Uh, discussion thread is started. Obviously you probably want more detail than I'm putting in at the moment. Okay, so we've got two test cases in a test suite about permissions. I go back to my desktop and we're going to assign those test cases to a test plan. Now, I've already created a test plan ready for an alpha release of the system and I'm just going to add these test cases. So the test plan is called configuration testing and I'm just going to add the test cases inside this test suite. Now at this point I could assign it to a particular user and send an email to that user that says you need to carry out these tests. I'm not going to for this one, I'm just going to leave it to um, open and I'm going to add these selected things. Now you know that you can have different versions of the test cases uh, so you always know which, which version you've been using on a particular uh, test plan. So for example if the first time you run through the, t the tests you might uh, realize that the tests actually need tweaking a bit. So you create a new version of it and you make sure that next time you run uh, another test you use the most up-to-date version but you've always got a record of what went previously. So that is ready now for execution. So we go to test execution and you can see down here we have a number of different numbers and colors Green is the number, uh, number of tests that have passed, red is the number that failed, and blue is the number of blocked, which means we've got a certain way, but we can't get any further. So as a, this is me as a tester, and you can give a, a, a user a specific role that's just a tester, so they only see this, and they only see the tests that they're meant to be running. So it's saying it's not run, this is my set of instructions. Of course, you can add attachments and images and all sorts of things to this. And let's say I'm, I've run the test, put some notes in. Um, seems to work okay, um, but some slight 
problems with finding the user profile. So I'm going to say that that one's failed um, because you know, usability wise it failed. Now what you can do then is as a leader you can then go in and override someone and say no that test actually passed but we need to perhaps make an, another test around usability. It depends how complicated, how sophisticated you want to, to be on this. And then I'm going to save that and move on to the next test. And we'll just say this one passed. OK, I'm not going to put any comments in. So you can see the numbers here have changed. We've got one passed, one failed. See straight away how it, how it was. And I can go back to my desktop and look at some test reports. Um, the test plan report just gives you a, an overview of these are all the tests that are going to be carried out. The test report, if I just run this, it gives us a nice document that says what's happened at each point. You don't have to have all these uh, the details in, you can just say it's failed. Um, if you're just wanting metrics, you can you can get hold of those. Many of these reports you can export them as Word or Excel. Um, really depends on what your particular needs are. And these are the most useful ones I, I've got. I, I found that, that you can quickly see which test cases haven't got a tester assigned and which test cases haven't yet been assigned into a plan. So very easy to then get get the test cases, put them into a plan, so you don't forget them. So that's test link. On first sight, it looks quite complicated. Um, there's a process to work through when you're building the tests um, and then it really depends on how complicated you want to make it. Um, the, the beauty of it is you can keep it very simple and so that only the testers uh, the testers only see what they need to see and you, you can just have one set of tests that you just rerun over and over again each time you uh, do a particular re release of something. Um, or you can make it very complex and have it linked up with your um, bug tracking systems, uh, automated testing, and whole you know different versions of tests, all sorts of things. Um, it's really quite rich, and but just very very useful.